We've got some spectacular imagery coming at you today from the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash and Mash, coming at you from the Smash News Network, the busted name in news. And we've got some filamentary collapse, perhaps some ejecta happening in the the southwest. We've also got some activity going on in the center of the solar disk. Huge coronal hole, which we'll show you some spectacular close-ups of. We've got coronal mass ejections to cover. And also some activity in the east, especially in the northeast. Huge set of sunspot groups in the southeast as well. Huge increase in the sunspot number. It's exciting stuff. And here's yesterday plus today in our SDO intensity gram. So quite a bit of growth on this sunspot group here. A little bit of growth in this sunspot group here. More sunspots to get named up here. I think this one will actually get a name also. So increase in the sunspot number, increase in the radio flux, increase period in solar activity. Likelihood of Earth-directed coronal mass ejections remains at nearly 100%. That's your colorized magnetogram for yesterday plus today. And by the way, the buy one, get one free sale ends tonight. So visit the links below the video if you're in the market for some hemp lucid products. Buy one, get one free sale ends tonight. Links below the video as well as on the homepage at smashomash.com. It's only the best. And welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Congratulations on realizing that the channel exists. Please support the channel via clicks as we make just this side of nothing to put the content on YouTube. It's only the most detailed solar imagery and comprehensive space weather you'll find in the known universe. You can also find links to ShoreMed, which, by the way, is not insurance. It's an association membership with the American Better Health Organization focused on improving your health. You can get group insurance by being a member of ShoreMed, but the ShoreMed base membership is just that. It's a nonprofit membership which gets you all sorts of discounts, like discounts on vision, dental. It gives you virtual veterinarians, doctors by phone, counselors by phone, savings at the pharmacy counter, and lots more by presenting your ShoreMed card. Save some cash. Thinking of having some work done? Get a ShoreMed membership and save some cash on said work. Next, we're looking at volcanoes which for some reason, Mauna Loa's off the list. Don't worry, folks, it's not done erupting. Shivaluch continues to explode on the Kamchatka Peninsula, though. 13,000-foot ash plume over Kamchatka from Shivaluch. Semeru on the, East Java, on the Isle of East Java, Indonesia, exploding flight level 200, 20,000-foot ash plume over Semeru. I think that's an uptick. Tacono exploding flight level 070, 7,000-foot ash plume over the Isle of Halmahera. And Popocatépetl exploding, flight level 210. Sangay exploding, flight level 210. And Sabankaya, it's an uptick at Sabankaya. It's pushing the 30,000-foot marker. As Sabankaya explodes in Peru, it's producing a 29,000-foot plume of volcanic ash. A stark reminder to not pole vault the caldera. In any case, turns out that Mauna Loa is still indeed erupting. Here's a live stream from the USGS Hosted by Two Pineapples. Drop by Two Pineapples. Perhaps give them a like. Press subscribe for Two Pineapples. Shout out to Two Pineapples. Congratulations on your 10,000 plus subscribers. Only about a year ago, Two Pineapples was at like 2,000 subscribers. Surpassed us in short order. Next, looking at uh, seismicity for the past 24 hours. There's the past 90 days. And it's been pretty calm as far as earthquakes, although one came in here as we did show prep. So no major quakes here, although we did have a 5.0 in Colombia. Texas continues to shake with another 3.2 at Texas. We just had one come in here at the Rakanais Ridge. We'll get to it. Of course, some earthquake activity in Hawaii. No surprise there. So the Rakanais Ridge did see a 5.2. That was at 3.39 this morning. It looks like a larger quake just came in. 
There was also a 5.5 in Africa, so not the most common place for a quake there. In Gabon, probably caused some damage as we see some orange and yellow on the shake map. And the pager, 5.5 at Gabon. That was the largest quake of the past 24. And this Rakanes Ridge quake just came in. As we did show prep, that was a 5.4 at 1113. Universal time, and let's get back to space. We've got an inordinate amount of space weather imagery for you today, folks. We've got more videos than we usually show. It's You could consider it a Sunday special. So this is composite, by the way. This is what we started things out with. This is 193 plus 304 angstroms because it shows the extended corona and filaments very well. And by the way, there have been coronal mass ejections. We'll let you know later in the video whether or not they are earthly directed. Stop your grinning and drop your linen. They're not going to destroy civilization. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux has come up to 134 solar flux units, now surpassing the 81 day average. Yes, the 81 day average. So you, you see this like dark red line here? That's the, the 81 day average and the radio flux now above that. So reaching new peaks here in the 10.7 if we stay at these levels. And we can expect to see these levels continue for a while, if not increase in the coming days as we've got umbral growth, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. I think also in the Southeast. Also notice the red line here. I believe that's going to go a little bit higher today as well, as we've got new sunspots to get named. Now, looking at the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard, we don't see any geomagnetic unrest or geomagnetic storm conditions. I would say late in the day on December 6, we can expect to see a coronal hole high-speed wind impact. So late in the day there on Tuesday, I would expect to see the initial portions of the coronal hole high-speed stream to show up in the form of a high-density wave preceding the uh, high-speed portion of the coronal hole high-speed stream. And I just wanted to take a quick note here to take, a, to take a look at the Carrington event. The Carrington event occurred in 1859 in September. And if you look here, you notice that there was actually a double peak in that solar cycle, and it was following a, a, an uptick. So we had the uh, this this solar this you could some people call it a grand solar minimum, whatever you'd like to call it. But there was some weak there were some weak solar cycles, and then solar cycle eight was quite a bit stronger. Solar cycle nine was a double peak solar cycle. And the Carrington event occurred just before, I'm sorry, solar cycle 10 was a double peak cycle as well. And the Carrington event occurred just before 18, 1860 there in September of 1859. And uh, the point is, folks, sometimes CMEs happen. You don't necessarily need to see high levels of solar activity for the Earth to get hit by a large CME. Now let's take a look at Earth's geomagnetic moment from space. So here's Earth's magnetic moment from space. The scale here is nanopascals. That is the units depicted. Those are the units depicted by the space weather modeling framework in this imagery. It's showing out to about 12 Earth diameters. That's the last four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from space. Next we'll show Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. Ground magnetic perturbations here showing the most likely places to see induction into power grids, rail lines, pipelines, the aurora borealis, and australis. It's ground magnetic perturbations. The units depicted here are nanotesla, magnetic flux density, and like the last imagery, that is the last four hours. We show it daily on the channel since it's not accessible via archive format. So things calming down here. It's the calm before the geomagnetic storm. We're expecting a significant one from the coronal hole wind from the coronal hole that is currently facing the earth at the moment geomagnetically calm conditions there's plasma headed this way quite a lot of it but at the moment things are quite calm so kp 1.33 here at the moment the planetary k index a measurement of global geomagnetism let's take a look at the real time solar wind next we did see a minor increase here in the solar wind density we can expect to see this go up to like 35 or maybe 40 or so 
from the current very well-defined trans-equatorial coronal hole system. Current conditions are about 11 protons per cubic centimeter for the solar wind density. Solar wind speed still elevated here at 513 kilometers per second. Next, looking at magnetic data, starting with the GOES magnetometers. There are the GOES 16 and GOES 17. Fairly smooth curves here. Well, let's take a look at the heliospheric current sheet. Is there a North Pole current sheet headed this way? Well, there's some indecision happening on the east side of the sun. So if you look here at the end of this, you'll see the North Pole current sheet showing up. That means Earth is close to the current sheet boundary. The north versus south polarity boundary, that is. Keep in mind this data is one hour and 18 minutes old. And that will give us some insight into which sunspot group will be stronger, the ones in the north or the ones in the south. And I'm suspecting that the ones in the north are going to win, and we're going to see a south pole current sheet. Not a north pole one, but that is anybody's guess. If you've got conjecture, leave it in the comments. Next, our line of sight field plot. Solar polar fields here in red for south, green for north. Solar B field in blue. As we watch the solar cycle progress here in spectacular fashion. And here's this coronal hole we were talking about. It's quite large. It's quite in charge. And there's a high-speed solar wind coming out of that. A bunch of protons, mostly hydrogen nuclei, but also... Uh, some helium nuclei, some electrons, and some other heavy elements undoubtedly making their way out of there. Very low iron levels where you see that dark area, that coronal hole system. Next, our Gong 2 data. You can see that is indeed a South Pole-oriented coronal hole there. Quite well defined there, showing up in red for South Solar Polar Field. And let's do a full disk view in that same 211 angstroms wavelength from SDO. Some filamentary activity here all around the sun, and again, likelihood of Earth-directed CMEs, very high. Likelihood of large solar flares, also very high. And let's get the sunspots next. So we're going to have some new named sunspot groups down here. It looks like that this, one, this one here is going to get a name. So that'll be, I don't know, 3157 maybe? I believe there are some more sunspots to be named around 3156 as well. So we've also got significant growth in 3155. It's a lot of activity happening quite rapidly. So we've got a bunch of images for you here, starting out with the SGO magnetogram. And good morning, Tin Man 1057 Thanks for dropping a comment. So here we've added 193 angstroms to show the extended corona. And let's switch that to the SDO continuum to show the sunspots directly. And now let's subtract 193 angstroms. So more activity in the north than the south. We try to include all the sunspots in this series of images here. So some significant growth here on 3155. And let's do some close-ups here of the two largest areas. This behemoth. Again, I think that trailing sunspot is going to get named as a different group based on what the NASA imagery showed on the uh, solar flare probability imagery. And here's the most interesting portion. Some additional sunspots to likely get names up there. So the sunspot number is going to rise today along with the radio flux probably rising a little bit higher as well. We've surpassed the 81 day average. Solar Cycle 25, it's got a long way to go. The sun is not shutting down. So as far as relativistic particles, we ain't got none. We did have one M-class flare. It was for a very short duration. Short duration impulsive flare there. That happened at about 1740 universal time. Peak flux was 
about 1.3, an M1.3 was the size of that flare. And let's take a look at some composites from SDO. This is 94 plus 131 angstroms. That M class flare came from the northeastern series of sunspots up there. Don't worry, we've got some additional close ups. So here's just a basic zoom in. And here's a close up of those active regions. Once again, likelihood of major flares is very, very high. We've got about a 100% chance to see M-class or even possibly some X-class flaring happen. It's exciting stuff from the closest star. Next, we've got a star chart. As we encourage our viewers to look up, we're always interested in what's going on above our heads. And at the moment, we've got Mars setting in the west. Cygnus just rose in the north-northeast. That's what's going on over Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. And here's what's going on in the solar system at large. Let's advance this one week. It's your solar system forecast. Keep in mind the diagram is not to scale. Here's where things will be in a week. We'll still have a gibbous waning moon by 12.11. And next, we'll look at some coronagraphs, as we are always interested in whether or not coronal mass ejections are headed toward Earth. So there goes one. Is it earthly directed? Uh, I don't think so. That's 105 frames from yesterday. Here are 41 frames from today. Some additional CMEs there happening early this morning. Are those earthly directed? Well, I don't think so, but let's make sure by looking at Stereo A at Lagrange 5 and Soho Lasco C3 at Lagrange 1. Stereo A here on your left, Soho Lasco C3 on the right. Keep in mind, once again, for you new viewers out there, congratulations on realizing the channel exists. From Stereo A's perspective, Earth would be off on this line, which means we don't have any Earth-directed coronal mass ejections, although the likelihood of seeing some is very, very high. So those CMEs all on the far side of the sun or well off the north-south line from planet Earth. Let's take a look at some 24-hour videos here. Here's a zoomed-out composite with the Soho Lasco C3, which is blue, C2, which is red, and the SDO 304 Angstrom's wavelength ionized helium. And we'll zoom out even farther. There you go. Here's the full zoom. Again, none of those CMEs are earthly directed. And let's take a look at filaments. A huge number of filaments are on the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk. You can see dozens of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I lost count at 17. Huge filaments and lots of them. Huge prominence down here showing up in the southeast. Once again, likelihood of coronal mass ejections in the earthly vicinity remains nearly 100%. If you'd like to name any of these filaments, let us know in the comments what you think they should be named. This is the Eugene Bagashov, by the way, which has now split in two. The Eugene Bagashov filament, folks. If you've got a name for this huge one in the Southern Hemisphere, let us know in the comments what you think it ought to be named. So here's the last about two and a half hours from the GO-16 SUVI. With its great wide field of view, it's fantastic at showing prominences like this filament out here, which is trying to decide whether or not gravity will win or magnetism. Is it going to be blasted out into the greater solar system, or will it collapse back toward the chromosphere? Looks like at least a portion of it is collapsing back toward the chromosphere. And let's move into bonus features right after we show one more video 
the last 24 from SDO 171 Angstroms. A spectacular portion of the ultraviolet spectrum. Starting up bonus features to look at charging hazards. We do have some major charging hazards once again. We've got some serious internal charging hazards just south of the equator for our satellites. So there could be some communications breakdowns from that. That's from high energy electrons building up inside the circuitry of satellites. Practically around the whole world, there are some internal charging hazards now. So the electron storm continues. It made it all the way to about 18 times warning levels yesterday. That's the three-day GOES electron flux. And here's the forecast model forecasting for a downtick here. And uh, yeah, in a couple of days, we can expect a, a more serious downtick as there is a coronal hole wind stream about to show up. So here's the one-year chart to put it in context. That's the NOAA forecast, by the way, for relativistic electrons. That's the one-year graph from Solon.info. Let's take a look at the ionosphere as we do see some enduring low frequency anomalies, especially around Southern South America. Let's check it out. So here's the animation of the F ionosphere layer, this data courtesy of Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. Again, enduring low frequency anomalies around South America. If it's not obvious on this imagery, it'll be obvious on the anomaly gram which we will show next. So here's the anomaly gram. You can see those enduring red blobs there. Those are low frequency anomalies. This imagery shows anomaly in megahertz from a 30 day median. You can see that low frequency anomaly there centered over large portions of South America. Let's bring the latest image. There's 1145 universal time ionogram in megahertz. There's the anomaly in megahertz from a 30 day median. And we'll also take a look at the total electron content. Total electron content depicts the free electrons between your GPS satellite and your handset. It's the free electrons from about 12,500 miles of altitude down to your handset. So there is the total electron content map courtesy Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. Highest electron flux, highest electron content is above uh, southeastern Africa at the moment, right near the African rift zone there, northwest of Madagascar. Here's the animation. That'll show you the most likely places to see GPS errors. And those, those viewers who live around the equator are aware that GPS's do not work well around the equator, especially around noontime. If you've got big GPS errors and you need to navigate, use your Wi-Fi location services. If there are Wi-Fi hotspots around, their IP addresses will help you to navigate. Next, we're showing you the latest intensity gram and the latest colorized magnetogram because, well, there is lots of activity Lots of sunspots there. Some of them are quite gigantic. No need to zoom in on those. Those are quite significant. Let's show one more series of images from SDO. This is Iron Star. That's 335, 193, and 94 angstroms. And the data is from yesterday plus today. And it has become time once again to switch gears to meteorology. We won't rant about too much stuff. We'll just switch gears to meteorology here at the Smash News Network, Lease Busted Name and News. And before we do that, let's pause for a station identification. Thanks for tuning in to the Smash News Network, least busted name and news. If you'd like to support the content, consider becoming a member of the Smash team at the gold or silver level. 
smashamash.com slash smash team is our website we replaced patreon with a superior one although we still are on patreon there is a credit crawl coming back so stay tuned for that by the end of the year there will be a credit call a credit crawl for our contributors thanks for being executive producers those who have especially the smash team at the gold or silver level there's also a bronze level if you're unable or unwilling to open your cobweb encrusted wallet next consider following us on twitter Yes, on Twitter. Twitter.com slash smash mash No, I do not follow Elon Musk. I could care less what he has to say. I could care less what he has to say, but every time I view my Twitter, I get to see what he has to say anyway, even though I don't follow his account. I'm sick of his investment scams. That's my main beef. By the way, if you check out our merch link on the homepage at smashamash.com for the smash merch link, there's a 25% off site-wide sale going on on the Red Bubble Shop. You can find links below the video also. And of course, our top selling product there contains words which huh, my, my <laughs> status is none of your business. HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, has not evaporated. It's still a thing. Yeah, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996 has not evaporated, folks. Your protected health information is your business and your business alone. Are you allowing public officials to make your health decisions? Do you think that might be unwise? Let us know in the comments what you think. Today's featured product is, by the way, a re-release, one of our first merch items that we ever made. Congratulations on surviving global democide so far. And today's featured product is just showing up here again. They're in order of best selling. I'm surprised this one hasn't sold better. And thanks to whoever picked up merch yesterday, by the way. Some Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera merch was bought. Today's featured product is Smasher Price, my first pandemic. Congratulations on surviving one, by the way. I'm not just Smash on Mash, but I'm also a client. So once again, congratulations on surviving a global pandemic. So far, well done. Well done. How's that mask in the world been working out? Been working out good? Have those masks been preventing transmission? Let us know if you dropped your transmission. Did your tranny run out of fluid? Did your transmission seize up because of masks? Let us know in the comment. Let us know in a nice comment. Tell us all about it. Tell us about your experiences. How's that been working out? Of course, masks have never worked historically for thousands of years. Maybe they'll start working in 2023, so let's just keep using them because they've been so effective, right? Once again, congratulations on surviving a global pandemic so far. By the way, we've been releasing music. If you haven't noticed, it's the fourth day of Smashmas right now. So we've put up a new playlist. Yes, a new playlist with original music. Check it out on YouTube. Press like, press subscribe, press share. Even if you're unwilling to view the playlist, but check it out, the 12 Days of Smash Miss. There you go. We've put out three tracks now. Yesterday, Red Button. On the third day of Smash Miss, the Smash Team gave to thee. Red Button, you, me, us, and conclusivity. Yes. Playlists. Check them out. You can find videos that aren't even about space weather or meteorology on the playlists, like Terms to Find, The Diamond Anvil, Too Hard to Smash, music videos like Shut Up Fauci and more. Thanks to all of our subscribers who have tolerated the pathetic and putrid censorship over the past five plus years. As we bring you the most detailed space weather and comprehensive imagery of the sun, you'll find any place in the known universe. Next, we're looking at temperatures. And oh, my God, Africa, it's very hot. Oh, no. Jeez, oh, whiz, it's over 100 degrees. Oh, my God. Dear God, it's over 103 degrees over here. Of course, it is approaching summertime there. But let's see what's going on in Antarctica. Oh, my God, it's melting as summer approaches in Antarctica. It's looking cold on the Australian coast. Only 48 degrees Fahrenheit over there. What's going on with that? 
There must be a there must be a dearth of carbon dioxide. Here's what's going on in the northern hemisphere. Yowzers, look at the temperatures up here in Siberia. Negative fifty six degrees Fahrenheit. That is berserk. And of course the United States looking a little bit on the chilly side as well here. Let's just get off of the realm of temperature entirely. Remember folks, the temperature is not the climate. Switching to wind, this is the surface wind scenario for the eastern world. We've got a strong low here. Yeah, there, that's a low right there. You see that? That's clockwise rotation in the southern hemisphere, a.k.a. low pressure. Here are the jet streams of the eastern world. Here are the jet streams of the western world. Surface winds depicted ha. Surface winds of the central world depicted ha. And jet streams of the central world as shown ha. By the way, folks, I don't know if you're aware, but I consider it a virtue to go from being completely serious to utterly silly with no warning at the drop of a hat and with no time to prepare for being very, very silly. Next thing we're looking at is clouds and fog, clouds and fog over the Western world. That's our shortwave radiation map. It's too dark over most of this imagery to view any land masses here as the sun rises over the Atlantic Ocean. That's what's going on from the NASA GOES interactive weather satellite, the 3.9 nanometer radiation variety. Clouds and fog, they emit infrared radiation. Why? Because water vapor is a greenhouse gas. Yes, a real greenhouse gas. That's why it stays warm at nighttime when it's cloudy here on planet Earth. Next, Looking at the weather.gov map, we're going to scroll down to show you the key. If your county's lit, click your county. There is the key to show what the color codes mean. Again, we don't have time to go over all of that information. Hydrologic output there for northern Alabama and central Tennessee. And some stormy seas there over the Great Lakes. Some winter weather advisories and some winter storm warnings over the northwest. Let's take a look at some forecasts. Here's the pressure and precipitation forecast based on the Europe based on the GFS model for the next 72 hours 72 hour pressure and precipitation will likely look like this we show 72 hour forecasts because they tend to be accurate unlike anything longer than about 72 hours where they be where the accuracy goes right down the drain 3 day forecasts are fairly legit That's why we don't show you three-week forecasts on the channel, because it's complete nonsense. But this is the 72-hour positive snow depth change forecast based on the same GFS model, as heavy snow continues to fall over large portions of California. Dag! Next, looking at snow depth. So we're going to take a little bit of extra time here to look at snow for a moment. It's pretty snowy in the Northern Hemisphere. Northern Hemisphere surpassed the 56-year the 56-year maximum average. I don't know. We'll get to it here in a minute. The point is, uh, lots of snow on the north side of the planet. No forecast needed there. Let's take a look at global, global cryosphere watch here just to take a look. Here's your multi-sensor. Earth looking like it's having a little bit of a high albedo moment here, at least for the northern part of the planet. The albedo effect, by the way, is where radiation is reflected back into space, making the planet cooler. Albedo effect, yes. It's a positive feedback mechanism for global cooling. We won't go any more in depth into that. But here's the current state of affairs for snow mass balance, not including mountains. And yeah, we're above the one year we're, we're above the one standard deviation above normal here for snow mass balance. We're very close to the one standard deviation above normal for snow cover extent. That's the two-dimensional snow cover. And then we've got well above the plus one standard deviation 
above the 1998 to 2011 average there for snow water equivalent. So quite a bit of snow there. Oh, also we'll take a look at the, there's the Rutgers snow tracker and you can see it was above the 56 year maximum there for a brief period. And let's continue on to our lightning mapper and check it out. There's a strong lightning storm here in the central Atlantic here around the uh, Eastern Caribbean area, southeast of Bermuda. Huge lightning storm happening there. Let's see if we have any terrestrial strikes here to report from lightningmaps.org. Yes, lightningmaps.org. Give it a minute. It's well worth the time. So we have got some Italian lightning here continuing. Some activity there in the central Mediterranean. And also in the east central Pacific. Seeing some lightning strikes there. No terrestrial strikes in the U.S. here at the moment, so let's continue on to our U.S. Doppler radar map. which is loading slower than the jalopy that the Three Stooges drive. Anyway, there's the lower 48. Oh my God, we've got, we've got technical difficulties, folks. Just give us a minute here. We've got our satellite imagery timed out. We do originally stream these videos live to Twitch, twitch.tv slash smashomash. And then we set them to unpublished where they're YouTube exclusives after they've streamed live. So if you want to see them when they go live, just install the Twitch mobile app. Twitch.tv slash smash mash. So there's the U.S. Doppler radar. Looks like some snow falling in northern Pennsylvania here at the moment. There is the clouds and fog. 3.9 nanometer radiation. And there is water vapor. We've got some cold air brushing in there from Canada in places like eastern Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, pushing into Wisconsin. Some cold temperatures coming to the Great Lakes. Here's your recap, starting with vertical motion of water droplets or snowflakes. It's the U.S. Doppler radar, ground-based radar systems. And here are some space-based systems. 3.9 nanometer infrared radiation. And the water vapor map, which shows all of the water vapor. Looks like clear skies over central Mexico. We've got high pressure over central Mexico at the moment. That's where we'll have to close things out. Thanks for tuning in. And once again, congratulations on realize the channel exists. <laughs> Oh, big tech. I don't know why you self-destruct, but congratulations. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash a mash signing off. And may that solar wind be at your back. Opinions expressed in this video, not necessarily the opinions of Smash News Network. Please post a name in news.